Hello and welcome back to another episode of Let's Analyze. We're going to take a look at this lovely little gem, Sandwalkers. This is the prologue version. It's free. You can go play it right now. Uh, I'm skipping the intro cinematics because they're a little long, but boy, do you owe it to yourself to go watch them. They're super cool. This is a world that has been ravaged by some apocalyptic event, and now our mission in the game is to go and plant literally just a tree. Our goal is to plant a tree so that the next caravan that comes after us can reach that tree and stay alive for a little bit longer and they can get a little bit further and plant a new tree until you can make it to the end where you can fix whatever mystical bad thing happened. We are in charge of Tallulah here, this lovely little snake person, uh, and we have been instructed to move forward. So without further ado, let us move forward. We'll make our customary observations about UI in the meantime. Okay, so we've got a, oh, some cacti are edible. This is basic Uwandian knowledge, crucial to the survival of the macaw caravans. Ooh, okay, so nice little um, theatrical window here, right? Good composition of the artwork and everything, very nice. I wanna talk about this dialogue box, look at this. Good contrast on the typography, right? Anyone with a vision disability is probably gonna be able to see the type type might be a little small, but other than that, you know, it's pretty great. And then I love the highlights here saying, hey, look, this is a keyword. This is something that you should try and remember. Not only is it going to allow us to, I'm gonna assume click. Oh, we can't click. Hmm, I wonder why there's a hover state then. Um, yeah, that's a weird signifier. Uh, but it, it signals to our brain, hey, this is something special, remember it, right? These did not taste of much, but caravaneers knew not to expect much, and Tallulah even more so. Okay. So we get uh, nice um, signifiers of showing where we're going to be walking uh, with the, uh, the semi-transparent white background on those hexes. Got a good bobbing up and down, a good shine on that uh, animation just to really bring your eye to the right spot. They didn't want to have any chance of you going to the wrong place. So we're continually losing health as we travel. This is interesting. Hold right click to move the camera while keeping the caravan still. Use this to scout for objectives and plan your route. Your current goal is in the southeast. So we're trying to go southeast. Aha, oh, okay, that's nice. Also, cool little uh, clouds texture for the fog of war. That's very nice. If you scrap that, this would probably just be a plain brown background. But having that and that little shader wobble on it really brings a lot of life into this. Very, very cool. It might be a little bit of a style mismatch because it's so high in fidelity. And then the um, the map here is like less so. And then down here we have these icons, which are like way lower uh, in in pixel density, right? So it's it's a little strange having those three different things. Um, let's go ahead and move on to the next. One. I can't I can't move on to the uh, cactus apparently. Oh, large opuntia is that? So we're gonna lose eight food, but then gain fifteen. We have details we can hide. Okay, uh, the icon got me that high details with the icon. It's a little low res, couldn't quite figure out what it was, but you know, I took a guess and it was right. I bet most people would probably feel the same way. So let's go here, grab our food, we resupply. Supplies are crucial to the caravan survival. If supplies run out, your caravaneer's health goes down. Each move comes with a cost dictated by the terrain type and height. So we're going to lose some food climbing up onto this rock into the desert lands. Um, let's go check out this lookout though. This is really interesting. So is it a game that's all about pathing? Is there more about it? Oh wow, look at these mountains. See, that's what I'm saying is like, these look so high fidelity. This like really uh, high res. And then these are so low res, it's a little jarring, okay. Um, yeah, I'm wondering if this is the game or is like, is this going to be combat right here? What is this? Is there combat? Ooh. After crawling alone for ages, Tallulah finally reached the sea of sand where she had been separated from her caravan. Tellers she recalled from her childhood would talk of antiphetic, antiphetic legends regarding the seas of sand, which had once supposedly been covered in water. The grains of sand would have merely been the dust of seashells laying at the bottom. The movement cost the caravan, the movement cost, the caravan depends. I'm not reading that wrong, right? That's like weird. 
The movement cost, the caravan, depends on... Uh, the movement cost for the caravan, I'm assuming is what it's meant to say, depends on terrain type. It might sometimes be more efficient to go around. Dunes. Bad. Don't go in dunes. Got it. I, I do want to know what this guy is, though. Oh, we got some food. Lovely. Okay. Uh, what is that? Oh, so we've got, if you look up top there, we've got our, our um, pop-ups. They need to come down when they're at the edge of the screen. So there just needs to be a check to see if it's going to roll off the screen. If it is, then then shove it down. Uh, should we get some food? Yeah, we are out of food. Grab the food. There we go. And go to the seventh caravan. This is where the seventh caravan made it to. Okay. Tulu wasn't surprised, but could not refrain from feeling some measure of disappointment. Hoping for the impossible was, after all, what fueled the caravans. Now, this is interesting that now we have this full screen instead of what it used to be of that um, theater box, right? A little, little curious. Also, what's this line over here? <laughs> the desert was no place for prudishness. Tulula gathered what remained of the cargo. That is to say, not much at all. Oh! As Tulula prayed, she thought she heard the sand whine. One would sometimes hear the dunes cry, but this thought was quickly wiped away as something emerged from the sand. The protector had survived. Increases hope. So now we're introducing hope as a mechanic. Very interesting. This is not your typical dungeon crawl. This is really interesting. The caravan is held together by its faith in its mission. This makes hope a crucial resource. If it falls to zero, the caravan disbands and abandons its quest. Okay, cool. So now we have a protector, Oriflan protector, and a rampant botanist. Okay. Once again, we're getting these signifiers to like be able to click on things, but I can't click on things yet. I don't know if that's just because we're in a tutorial or not. Let's go get some food. Oh my gosh, the uh, food costs in this game are unreal. Each caravaneer has a spell they can cast during exploration. Once they've been used, you can only regain them by resting. Use them wisely. Fertilize arid fields and plants? And protector strengthens the defense of all caravan members until their next combat. So there is combat. Okay. Okay. Uh... Sure. Memory obtained. Best practices. Okay. Let's restore the health of our... Oh, dude, that guy's amazing. I love Elephant Man. I love, el like, man. Elephant monster people, I'm all for. Great. So we're going to heal up our protector and go into this, what I assume is a combat with that danger radius around it. Prepare for battle and position your units. Okay. Uh, so looks like we've got, like, a Dice Folk style system where we're going to be rotating people around. I like that. Really enjoyed Dice Folk. Uh, curious what we're going to see here. You just entered combat. This happens when you encounter hostile cre creatures and people. In combat phases, you're trying to defeat your opponents while minimizing the damage sustained by your caravan. Sure, yeah. Each character in battle has a speed stat that determines its position in the turn order. When all characters have played, a new turn begins. Characters have a life and shield value. Shield regenerates at the end of the fight, but health does not. Uh, they die if their health go uh, goes to zero. Great. So we got our snake botanist up front. Uh, we can use pike. Pyracantha Vine and Lethargic Venom. Uh, so we can poison or put thorns. Interesting. So this is like going to give us a defense buff with thorns. Let's do that because the ant is going to take its turn next. There we go. Good. You went after our, uh, our, our protector. Inquisitive Stare will stare the ant down. So I, I like this little grid uh, system that they've got displayed there. That's really a, a strong signifier that allows us to not have the game world broken up with these game sort of terms, right? With the with the grid, but allows us to have the grid uh, in the combat system. That's, so it's a clever way to kind of separate the gaminess from the world. It helps enhance the verisimilitude of the space that you're actually in. Um, easy target. Doubles damage taken from the next attack. That sounds good. And then behind the target, eight strength damage. I'm kind of curious. The charge. Is he going to charge in and then be over here? Charge. What you, what's going to happen here? No. It, was it just saying like the thing behind them would also take damage? Let's get some poison going. Oh, <laughs> 
Do we still have thorns active? Ah, there's our thorns. Okay, so his thorns are gone. Let's inquisitive stare. <laughs> and then more dots. All right. Doubling the damage of the next attack is pretty strong. Was it double or 50%? Not totally sure. Among the desert predators, gigant scouts were ones a protector could defeat. This confrontation carried high stakes, however. If they managed to return to their colony, they would bring back a veritable flood of voracious insects just a few days later. Sometimes one must strike preemptively. Cool! Uh, Simple-ish combat system, but it works. I like it. Uh, very curious to see how that combat system is going to keep on interplaying with the world exploration. It, it seems to me like they really want the world exploration to be the main part of the game. So let's let's kind of keep seeing how this works out. No caravan is truly equipped to confront the fifty when it sets out. Each caravaneer builds up experience, which is then shared and redistributed within the group. Oniromancy is quite convenient for this. Click on a caravaneer to spend experience. Sure, let's level up our protector. Leveling them up improves their attributes and potentially their attacks and exploration skills. Cool, great. Let's do it. Spend your experience. Yes. Roll out. So we unlocked Raise Shield and Shield Bash. Lovely. Oh, we, we got to pick one of them. Okay. Um, I kind of like the idea of having this dude be our damage dealer and then our botanist being the buffer, right? Because she can give shields and thorns. So you can be the buffer. You can be the attacker. I don't know if that's the way it's going to work out. We could have also gone for shields and had that been, like, we're going to go for a thorns build. I think that could have been fun and interesting, but whatever. Is there a way to stop moving? Yeah, if we right click, get a small herd. Hey, someone planted a tree. Go team. You did it. Wow. The Makah generally say the seventh caravan was swallowed whole and would forever sleep underneath Uwandian sands. We tellers, however, always favor more open-ended interpretations. Had Tallulah entrusted her secrets to our ancestors, or was this a mere fantasy of tellers in search of the improbable, transmitted and transformed throughout the generations? It falls on you now to bear the weight of this question and many more still. Why had the fifthy appeared? What happened to Umama? Who once covered Uwando in her cool shade? How may we erase the one while recovering the other? Umama being the, ah, see, there's the hover over. That's what I was looking for before. I wonder if they just didn't have it, like, unlock. This is the problem with tutorials like this. It's really cool. It eases you into the game, but then you don't know what is or is not, like, a part of the game, right? So there's definitely, like, benefits and drawbacks, too. Okay. Rad. Love that we get the hover over. Falls on you to light the path for future generations. Good luck, Mka. Hold on to hope, for nothing will stop the caravans from moving forward. Not even death. In truth, caravanners could not reach Umama. No one. These trips were simply meant to expand their knowledge of the world, the Fithi, and other tribes. Then, to use homing scarabs to send all these memories back to the Crystal Library. Oh! However, as time passed, hope was waning, like nature in the desert. This sacrifice was proving too much. The Makar needed a sign. A sign such as this. We call it a fragment, an ancient artifact belonging to an ancient tribe, destroyed by the Fithi, who would carve their history in stone. If the caravans could find more, we might learn what circumstances created the Fithi, and thus, how to beat it. Okay. Cool. Interesting. Uh, apart from finding Umama herself, finding fragments are the greatest discoveries you can make. They will help you understand the origins of the Fithi and how to permanently defeat it. The Fithi being the, you know, apocalyptic thing. Okay, very cool. Whoa, and then you get a lot of lore. Whoa. I, if I were playing this casually, I would totally dive into that. We don't got time for that in a quick look, but definitely you should. You're in the city tree of Lakwasi. This is where your journey begins. Locations such as cities are the perfect place to find quests. Okay, they can. Sp <laughs> Most important quests can span several generations. Cool. Yes. Whoa, snail bro. An advisor came to meet us shortly before we left. He mentioned it had been a long time since caravans had found a land fit to plant a new tree. Uh, sadly, the good health of the trees that remained was as much of a pressing concern. Okay, he revealed that there had been no news from Yaz, the youngest city tree, in quite some time. Contact is generally rare. But still, it had been two years since Yaw's advisors had transmitted the traditional greetings. Um, yeah, okay, great. Go go check it out. 
Love it. Helping others bolsters your reputation and can lead to great discoveries. You can leave if you're done. What's the crystal library? Ooh. You may trade the memory points you sent back for knowledge to improve your caravan. Some knowledge requires you to obtain a given number of fragments to unlock. Okay. Um, yeah, let's up our supplies. That sounds really good. The overworld travel seems really, really stressful and rough. Unlike tales of past caravans, there was no guard of honor, no ovation, no sacrifice or blessing beyond the usual words. The counselor came alone by obligation. The 14th caravan, with just a teller, a botanist, a protector, and an anaromancer, left for the Fifi in total anonymity. We felt as though we were the last. Some would say that we were the first. I'm really digging the vibe of this game, I'm not gonna lie. Wando is vast and ever-changing. The region, region map displays reliable landmarks you found in your expeditions. Use them to plan your route. Okay. Goals and active quests display on the map if you know their location. If Umama truly exists, she must be in the east, but caravans have much to do before they're strong enough and the route is secure enough to reach her. I love this idea of, like, multi-generational um, progress, right? That is such a cool concept. Uh, and, and you... That it's it's a design concept that's very inherent to roguelites in general, right? But quantifying it this way, it's almost like Rogue Legacy. Rogue Legacy has a very strong multi generational component. This is echoing that, and I love when a game can bring in the roguelite ness of it into the narrative of the world. I just think that's super rad. Okay, so let's start exploring. Ooh, what are you? A large well. Uh, sure, I guess. I mean, this is... Oh, man. I Okay, I wish I could press M to open the map. That's one thing I'd like. But we're, we're trying to get to here. This is the next city. Um, and what is, what, what is blue? Oh, time-worn shards. See, now I'm moving really uh, uh, inefficiently. I'm kind of, like, upset at myself about it. <laughs> I need to not move so much all at once. Um, cost, or question mark, I don't know. And a pirate group, let's go beat the pirates and get a question mark. This is so open-ended, it feels like a hex crawl, like tabletop role-playing game in a lot of ways, which is really fascinating for me. Just that concept, it feels, um, if, if, if we were to take this into an octalysis type sort of framework, the randomness feels very high because you're exploring a whole lot, like this whole big world where things are constantly changing and shifting. You never know what's in that next hex, which is fascinating. Uh, empowerment is huge because you can go any number of directions and you don't know, you know, where what's going to happen, but you have the ability to choose where to go. So you are in control of that. Oh man, this is so interesting. Okay. I'm still a little bit lost as to how the positioning truly matters. We also have these arrows on the ground, which are misleading. I thought that was going to be like rotating things in and out. It doesn't seem to be the case, though. So I'm not totally sure what those arrows mean. Maybe we'll find out as we keep playing. Uh, okay. And then we have the UI of the attack saying this is what each of these things is going to attack. I like that. A lot of the games when you're trying when you have a multi-person party and you're trying to figure out the intentions of the enemies, then um, you have to kind of like mouse over them and remember, oh shoot, this one is attacking this guy and this one's attacking this guy. It's good to just have that information straight up and I think this is a clever way to do that so you don't have these big arcing arrows going all over the place that are very visually distracting. Once again, that's a benefit of this little simple grid. Okay, Mockery. Oh, vicious. we got our Bard. Perfect. Vicious Mockery. Deals 50% less damage with the next attack. Or, suffer, or we can just spit at him. Okay. Uh, Yeah, they're going to get... Well, he's going to get an attack. It's only one attack, though. That's going to be 17 damage against both of them, though. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. I think you're going to be on, like, permanent mocker, Mockery mode. Wait. No, it was only on one of them? Okay, let's... Oh, I don't like that. So when I hover, hover over one of these attacks, and it has both squares highlighted, 
and the red aura is underneath both of the characters. That to me is really clearly signifying it's hitting both of these things. Not it can hit either one of these. Shoot. I mean, that's a, that's a mistake I'm probably only ever going to make once, but oof, is that a big, big miss. Um, that is what we call self-explanatory rather than self-evident. You want your designs to be self-evident, which is there is no real opportunity for people to misconstrue what it means. They, they see it, and it obviously makes immediate sense. Like up here. This is clearly a out of this, right? We have 32 out of 46. Like, I don't have to learn what that means. This I'm needing to learn about, and that's a little frustrating. Uh, you're going to be getting... Oh, you already got swiped at. All right, we'll just... We'll just death pulse. The target dies? Caster plus 26. So this is if we kill someone with it, right? It's not going to be just instant death, right? Oh, we did heal up though. That's interesting. Okay, let's 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 try this. Ah, there we go. Yes, behind the target takes eight damage. So this uh, this little pop up here that is showing up, it works for a lot of things. Also, at the same time, kind of doesn't work for me. This secondary condition that they're displaying was very unclear exactly what the secondary condition meant. And we've got a bunch of different styles of it, too. We've got this details pop out, and we have this secondary condition. I just, I don't know, it feels like this This may be something we play around with in Figma um, at the very end. But let's keep playing. I'm not I'm not committing to this yet. I, I want to I kind of see what this is. So it looks like poison goes through armor. That's horrifying. So let's get some poison on there. You're basically just going to be dead. I mean, that's a three turn timer. Let's let's do some more poison and just you die on your turn. Oh, is it five poisons? No, oh, sure. Well, he's on a two turn timer. All right. So he gets to take his turn first. Wait a minute. Hold on. Why did he take 15 poison damage when he had five poison? Suffers three pure damage at the end of the turn for each stacked Poison. Oh, poison does three damage each. Wow. Okay. Um, I almost wonder if you could like change that poison icon instead of one bubble to be like three bubbles, like a big bubble, a medium bubble, and a small bubble, just to really communicate that idea of freeze. Okay. Um. Yeah, let's shield you up, bro. I think you need some tanks. You need some tankiness back in ya. And then we're just gonna stare Brosif down. Wow, that does a lot of damage. That does... M <laughs> That's my most damaging attack, is just staring someone down. Those are deadly eyes. Freaking Cyclops over there. Oh, and their shield breaks? They get stunned? That's interesting. Let's poison this guy up. Oh, we can't. It can't reach. Mm. Let's weaken your next attack. Because you're going to be hitting... Oh, okay. And there's the line connection. Okay. No, that makes sense. Um, the line connection being this is going to hit everyone. But you can see, like, it's still displaying the same signifier underneath the players, right? We still have those auras underneath everyone instead of saying... Having some sort of different state to really communicate this is going to hit these instead of these are options to be hit. So that's just a little bit of refinement that, in my opinion, is kind of important. Um, yeah, let's just get rid of this guy. There we go. Crushed. Crushed. We did take some damage, though. That was a bummer. We got a pearly shell, which is definitely not a catcher's mitt, and dates, a delicious treat tasting of caramel. Caravan gains 10 supplies, can be traded for more useful items in shops. This one feels a little odd as well. Like, it's just, it's so big, and I don't know what it's really meaning to say, you know? Like, why is there this big, empty half section on the bottom? It literally says empty. And then we have common. Is that what I can sell it for in the upper right? Just this whole thing I feel could probably get reworked. 
Because it is super not self-evident, I have no idea if it's going to be self-explanatory, like once I see it in context. I don't know. Ambush chance, plus 10%. So we got plus 10% and then a down arrow. That's an interference signal. I don't understand how those two things relate. How is something bad and ambush chance? Well, I guess that's an ambush is a chance is a negative effect if things are ambushing me. For some reason, now we have a greater chance of being ambushed. Is that is that what that is? Okay. We discovered vast terraced fields under rapid harvest by a veritable army of flawens. Not all the crops seemed to be ripe, but we were told that a storm was approaching, and they were already doubting whether they were enough to save what could be saved. Um... Okay, so this is like we have a skill that will help them out. Sure, we'll fertilize, I guess. With the help of your botanist, we did more than pick. We managed to bring to life precious plants that the terracers had already given up on. Great. Go team. All right, let's check our map. I really want to hit M. I really want to hit M for a map. Let's go to our inventory. Here you can manage the stuff you carry. Take into consideration the weight of items, their worth, and utility. You can also review the health of caravan members and equip them. Okay. Uh, oh. So this game, for better and worse, is definitely using a lot of white space. I feel like white space is great, but it also seems to me that things are kind of floating. I'm not getting a strong sense of like hierarchy and of focus. Like we have this middle section here which I'm guessing is kind of underneath the sprite to say this is the corresponding to this character, right? These are the traits of the character. And then we have attacks, but then we also have stats, and then we have abilities and traits and resistances, and all of these side panels just feel a little bit off, and I almost wonder if some visual treatment could be done here to make this feel a little bit, like... Let's go to our browser. Um... You know, if we had, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna steal this. I'm gonna take this transition that they have here and then just copy it. So we've got it. Whoop. Come on, bring the whole thing over. You think I'd learn this at some point? Uh, where's my mask? What are we doing here? Oh, right. I didn't, uh, didn't move it to the back. That's why. Okay. Good. Professional designer, folks. Here we go. <laughs> Finally actually doing the thing. Okay. Um, we'll flip it, and then we'll shrink it down. Like, if, if we even just had this, right? All of a sudden, this starts to look a lot more intentional. Shift H. Right? Now, before, it felt a little odd. Now it feels a little bit more like a triptych. And that was like a nothing change, right? But now it feels more intentional. Uh, I'm not super sold on the typography here, I'm not going to lie. Um, this pink, I'm kind of curious if it's going to... Uh, be good enough. There we go. Oh, it is double A, actually. I'm surprised. Um, I'm, I'm really surprised, to be honest. Very surprised. I thought it was going to be a lot lower than that. So, I mean, that's okay. That's good enough, right? It just feels a little hard to read. Maybe it's because font is a little odd or, or too small. I don't know. And then we have everything center aligned and then multiple columns. So we've got like one column here and then we have two columns here. Right? With a little bit of a gutter. And then we're back down to one column down here. So this just it, it all just feels like it needs some unifying. Right? It needs some tying together, in my opinion. What could that be? I think, you know what? 
what I would do is probably uh, it would probably make the the designers um, cringe, but I kind of want to try it out. We're gonna take stats. Oops. We're gonna take stats. We're going to delete that. Um, copy paste. Make a new mask. Come on. There we go. go to M. Move the resistance down. We're going to mask that out. And then we're going to do the same thing over here with abilities and traits. And a new mask. And bring this over. Okay. Here's what I would do. I would bring attacks and abilities and traits into one space. And then I'd bring, bring stats and resistances into one space. And to me, this is already making a whole lot more sense. That is just me, right? Could be that people in the audience are saying, no, this is terrible. Also, it's a little weird that this traits is like off-center, but whatever. You know, it's not the biggest deal. Um, that, to me, feels way more intelligible than this does, right? It feels like we have a lot more natural flow and direction with the addition of these borders here to kind of tighten it up. And it could be that this is just, you know, the prologue. It could be that the full release coming out, starting in early access this month, um, the full release is going to have, like, all of this be nicely textured and it's going to look great. But you can see how a small change for all of you developers out there, a small change really affects how this is going to read, right? And then just reorganizing things. So these stats and resistances, the numbers are together and the pictures are together. I don't think abilities and traits necessarily have to tie to resistances and they don't have to tie to stats, right? That feels a little arbitrary. It could be what they were trying to do was um, a section up top and then a section down below, right? So this is the uh, iconography stuff. This is the um, number stuff. Maybe. If that's the case, then I think we need a lot more visual treatments. And I would also argue, I don't know that that's like going to be how people would read it, right? I think they're going to go top left and they're going to see this hard line here and they're going to say, oh, I'm in this section now. This is a section of space. I don't think they're going to say this is a section of space unless there's a big visual treatment. But then we're bisecting it with the, I don't know. I'm not sold on this layout. I'm not going to lie. I think this works a lot better, in my opinion. Now, once again, I am operating without constraints and I'm operating outside of the team. So I have no clue what the decisions were that led to this. And it could be there were very, very, very good decisions that led to this. But just speaking as, a, as an observer, this is kind of what I would have expected a little bit more. Okay, let's dive back into the game for a little bit. We've been going for about a half hour. We're gonna keep going for a little bit longer. I think we've had some good discussion about uh, information hierarchy and everything. That's been really good. Um, oh, that's right. I wanted to check the... M oh, no, wait. We have a all this stuff. Okay. Yeah, all of it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Can be used on a character to restore 50% health. Why does that have its own section down below, right? Why is that not just, like, underneath the description? I mean, it is technically under the description, but are objects going to have such long usage text that it's going to take up that much space? and draw the attention away from the icon and the, uh, the the resource information up here. That feels like a strange decision to me. I'm curious to know why they did it the way that they did. Oh, this is, oh man, this is cool. Okay, so as much as I'm saying, oh, these are kind of odd UI choices in my opinion, I am loving so much about this game. It is so cool. Clearly really well put together in many ways. A lot of heart being poured into this. I like that we can um, move things around outside of this. I was just reading a, a reviews for an indie game yesterday where one of the big complaints was there was no way... Oh, I think it was like Gladiator Manager or something where they said there's no way to predefine where your characters are going to be at the start of the battle. So you have to manually set it every single time. This is great. I don't know that I necessarily would put it in the backpack, right? In the inventory. Or maybe I would change that icon away from backpack to be more caravan-y, like have a saddle or something or a camp. I don't, I, I don't know. Some, this to me says inventory. And we're getting like reputation and all that sort of stuff because it's about the caravans statistics. Which is just a little bit different than what, I've ex what I would have expected. Okay, we're trying to get over there. 
I don't know how far this uh, mountain range goes down, um, but I know it ends up here. So let's not go this way because then we're going to step into the danger zone. We're going to go right here. Getting, I'm getting smarter. Let's grab uh, the solo animal, renew our food, grab some resources, ambush chance. Yeah, I don't know what that ambush chance is. Uh, we're on a road now. I'm assuming that's going to make it a little bit better to walk on. Okay, let's go on the ground instead of the sand. Ancient ruins. Ooh. Freezing night. The day slowly left us in the cold company of the moon, and a chill wind prevented us from starting a fire. If we had a pyromancer, we could do it. We can resist by increasing rations, which will take a ton of food out. Enemies ambushed. Harmless. This is like a whole mechanic I don't understand. Combat starts once the gauge is full. Resets after each ambush. Interesting. So you can't always avoid combat. They are going to literally force you into combat, okay? You can sleep without fire, which decreases hope. I'm going to guess it's going to be a random chance of one of those two. That could read a little bit better. You could say, you know, percentage chance or this or this. You know, some way to say... Because I don't think it's going to be two instances of 50% hope decrease, right? Uh, oh, no, no, it's not 50% hope decrease. It's a 50% chance of... Okay, that didn't read to me until I came down here. Uh, a dice might make that more communicative or like a question mark or something. Um, it's a little, It's a little odd. Uh, just the 50%. That doesn't read to me as the odds of what is going to happen. But maybe, once again, maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm just, like, on a different vibe. Um, melancholic. What is that? Reduces hope. Well, so you have a 50% chance of one person reducing hope, or 50% chance of, like, all of the hope going. Let's just do this. Oh, we got a, uh, a break there. <laughs> So we did lose some hope, unfortunately. Let's go check out the ancient ruins. I'm kind of curious about this. Ooh. All people from all times have attempted to connect with the invisible. We were looking at one such attempt. Read the writings, increase hope, or telescope, admire the altar. Ooh, and if we had a... What? Someone else. We could listen to the spirits and get items. That's really cool. Let's Let's get our hope back up. I didn't mean to skip that. Oh, well. Buff. Enthusiastic. Plus 50% shield. Increase in very positive events. Oh, wow. It even increases, like, your luck score. That's interesting. All reputations plus two. We have something going on over there. Uh, we are running out of food. Let's grab this animal over here. Oh, what is all this? Oh, I just I want to explore everything. This just seems so cool. Oh, and here's our ambush. Okay. Here's our, uh, we were walking in the tall grass in Pokemon, right? I don't know what these are. I wonder if that's gonna, I mean, I'm sure that'll come into play later on. Oh, man, look at this background. That's so cool. And that just very subtle waving. And that is not a very intense animation, but boy, doesn't it make the game feel so much more alive. We got the clouds moving in the background. Once again, a good really far background that's moving so slow, you're never going to notice it unless you look for it, but it really makes things feel alive. Verisimilitude. Um, we got some broken text there as well. So they're going to chompy chomp chomp. Let's uh, make it so you are going to have a harder time getting through the shell. And yeah, let's let's uh, get some thorns up for these guys because they're gonna get not on. And then how much damage are you gonna do? Nine. Uh, he's fine. We're gonna death pulse. Can I? No, I was gonna wonder for, say if I could change the order of these guys, but I don't think so. Which is a bummer. I'd love to have him go after the elephant so he could get his death pulse off, but don't think that's gonna work. Um. Uh... Let's prime him for next turn. And then Inquisitive Stare. Moo! <laughs> Love it. Okay, bleeding suffers five pure damage at the end of the at the end of the turn. Okay. Um Let's get Venom on this guy, because I think we'll be able to wrap this up before they take another turn. Shouldn't be a problem. Okay. Cool. Right on. 
I'm really liking this. I'm really liking this. I think it would make a really fantastic Steam game. Um, just the exploration and, oh, what is this? A catalyst crystal. Sure, let's avoid that combat and go do the catalyst crystal. Ooh. When our hands dipped into the reserves, we found only the bottom of the basket. The real ordeal had now begun. Oh, dear. Oh, shoot. And you know what? We need to level up, too. Good. We can level up in the middle of the fight. That's good. Um, I, I got to go with my elephant, bro. I mean, he's so cool. Shield bash. Cool. Um, and then do I have enough experience? No. I don't know where my total experience is. That would be nice to have on this screen somewhere. We've got our filters for the for the inventory. That's good. Oh, combat consumables. That's what these are. Okay. Uh, can I put you in here? Not really. Okay. Return. I wish that said cancel. Cancel would be nice instead of return. Return, I, it took me a second to kind of feel comfortable with that. Cancel, I think, would just be more clear. Um, in fact, once again, we, we did this with Grimdark Survivors the other day. We could have the use button in the middle, and then the return be like an X up here. Well, I guess then you get the double X up there, and that's not great, because it's not a very strong modal background blurring that they've done. I don't know. I, I mean, it's fine. It's, 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 listen, guys, it's fine. It's fine. Ooh, right out of the gate. Uh, okay. They are going to be stabbing, stabbing, stabbing Mr. Snail Man. So let's lower that a little bit and get some shields up with some thorns. That sounds like a good plan to me. There we go. He's still going to take some damage. Oof, that was brutal. Uh, yeah. Pump your shell up, dude. Then shield bash. How much damage do you do? 14. And do we have a shield on you? Like, I would imagine so. Everything about you is shields, but I don't know if you, like, have a shield equipped or not. We can slow them. Uh, it's going to be 14 damage. That's 18 damage. That's 21 damage. I don't think we need to slow anyone down. We're at the end of the turn already. Um, let's crunch through this, dude. Let's expose the back back line. I'm liking the comic. The animations are fantastic. Um, this guy's done. Oh, he's done because we broke his armor. That's right. Okay. Well, now we can just go full damage, right? Um, yeah. Let's just knock him out. And then start getting poison on this guy to start working through his shields. And then uh, our tanks up front, who can't do poison damage, can just start chomping on this backline guy if they can. Um, looks like maybe... Oh, yeah, we can. Good. So it does cascade. So that's good. That's good. I was wondering if it was going to update or if it was going to say, no, you can still only attack this front line because there's still someone in the front line. I like, I like that we're doing it the other way around. Break your armor, so that should stun you? Yeah, okay, great. And... Uh, I mean, I guess this is just gonna kill him, right? Now it does 18 damage, why is that not killing him? Reduces incoming damage by 40%, got it, okay. We'll just knock him down, we'll just stare him to death. You know, like your parents do, it's fine. I'm a dad. I'm used to it. <laughs> All right. This should kill him. Take your turn. And there you go. Okay. It's interesting that the uh, the stun symbol stays behind after they're killed. Like, are they knocked out or are they dead? And if they're knocked out instead of dead, is there a reason for that? Like, is that going to matter in some way? I don't know. Curious. That was a lot of experience, though. 16 experience? Uh, let's, uh... Yeah, let's level up Mr. Snail Man. Memory overload. If the target doesn't have a shield, random ally takes 13 damage? Is that one of our allies or one of their allies? I need to know. 
And then we can level up uh, another guy. Let's level up the Bard. You always gotta spend some attention to the Bard. Brings shield down to zero. Oh, that's what it's checking it. That, that's not armor, it's shield. So if the elephant has shield when he uses the shield bash, he does the slow. Now this guy, if, if the enemy has shield, then it will hurt a random ally too. Okay, got it. Let's get some buffs on. Let's turn you into a little bit of a buffer. Um, move over here. Yep, okay. Ooh, improvise a song. That's cool. Shooting stars. We met some conic travelers. Okay. Yay, we made up a song. Uh, guys, we've been going for uh, nearly 50 minutes. I love this game. This is... Uh, once again, this is Sandwalkers, the prologue. Oh, man. This is being so rad. I'm loving this thing. I'm definitely going to be playing it more in my downtime. Um, definitely go give it, a uh, give, it a, give it a check. With that being said, Fox Hollow Games is a charitable enterprise that is helping people enter the game industry. We do things like this where we do some game design and UI analysis uh, with little indie games. We do um, game theory discussion videos. We have week daily streams where we build games as a community together. If you want to learn how to build a game, come hang out in one of those streams. We have a game jam starting up in July. Make sure you sign up for that. You can get paid for a week's worth of effort to build a, a, a little game. We even have a most growth category. So you don't even have to make the best game. You just have to learn a lot and you could be eligible for some prize money. So make sure you sign up for that. Big thank you to our sponsors for that. Sundown launching the Feathered Serpent next week uh, on July... Uh, June 11th and Alistios and River Wolf Games. Thank you so much for your support as always and we will catch you all next time.